Right, so the parcel that was supposed to be due on Saturday finally arrived yesterday. This is the one which allegedly I'd refused until it went back to the depot. And that's because whoever's at DHL clearly hasn't got a run out of time thing for the couriers to do or I can't find location. They could have phoned me and I'd have popped two miles in two minutes, the 60 mile an hour roads here, and would have picked it up, but no. So if anyone's listening who's in the hierarchy at DHL, that needs to have a discussion with me. So we've got an immaculate um, boxed York A63 with my compile lead and side bobbles and instruction book. These are supposed to be in upside down and it is. Very good. So put the box to one side. Sticky residue from big feet from the same place. And try and read the serial number, which still has the plastic on the back of the label. If I stack about five pairs of specs, I might be able to read that. 201. Double O five six O. We'll make a start on this. I have fifteen minutes. That was a comment on power leads. This is the standard power lead we're using, which is the one originally provided with such radios from Cybernet. And it's been noted that when I go into transmit on the on the air test, there's a bit of lights dimming. Just bear in mind that whatever the power drop is we might look at that power drop on this video but whatever that power drop is I'm tuning it including that power drop so the problem there could be that if somebody found a, a heavier duty one and there wasn't a power drop well the radios we're tuning could be slightly overpowered couldn't they well there you go That's the one supplied, that's the one we're using. So with the Uniden sets, it's a similar scenario. We're using a, a standard lead, but when it's the Maxon sets, we either use the Crocodile set clips or the leads we make, which are a bit more tonker. What else is there? Oh, the Amstrads we're going to be using, leads we make, which are a bit more tonker. By Amstrad, I say anything with the Cybernet 002F chassis. Uh, we won't open it up yet because this hasn't got feet we'll put the cloth down see what parameters it's doing it's powered up and it's on 19 so that's on mid I'm going to set that to high Normal, off, normal, normal, normal. RF gain to full. Dimmer works. Mic gain to full. It should be called mic attenuation, shouldn't it? Right, we need to plug the test equipment in to the extension speaker socket. We need to plug the speaker mount on the wall, the SW711 speaker, into public address socket. People say, what are you using as uh, extension speaker? And it's exactly the same as this one here, which is on the bench. And it's to be 711. Be aware there's a Pi one or Philips one branded, and it's exactly the same case, but it's a 4 ohm speaker, so it's not suitable for CB. Reason being that Pi straight Philips 
were supporting with their extension speaker radios even from the valve days which were 3 ohm speakers so let's put picture in picture on and we're in the low scale which is 3 watts I'll put it on channel 20 and plug in the test set and here goes well it's doing 3.1 watts on channel 40 doing 3.05 watts channel 1 is doing 3.1 watts back to channel 20 look at the power consumption 948 milliamps and on low power zero I'm just going to work that switch backwards and forwards. It's a dirty switch. It's hundred and it's two hundred milliwatts. So we'll deal with that. Deviation. Test set's been on a long time, like two hours. Wow, look, it's 1.8 on this test set for what it's worth. And the frequency, go over to the frequency counter, is 27.79107. So it's not far out at all. We'll set the signal generator to exactly the same frequency. So we're absolutely fair and honest, 79.107. No point having the signal generator at 79.125 when the red is not actually on frequency properly. It's not far off enough to be noticeable, it's not far off enough to be illegal. So, we're going to look at the sign meter, which has been moved by the mice. And... Not point three five. Supposed to be under point seven, it certainly is. I don't expect we'll get another one that is point two. It's not point two nine five. I'm not gonna quite do it point three. And then It's point eight two, not point eight two. Squelch to full. And let's go over to the attenuator. We want it to be hundred microvolts for the squelch to open when it's set to full on the radio. That's one microvolt, three, ten, thirty, it's opening and it's opening at eighty three microvolts, which is too slack. That said, there's some radios that aren't adjustable, and the open is a lot worse than that. But this is the set that is in that category. And the squelch threshold, 0.58. So we'll just take the signal back to 100 microvolts, which for a CB radio in the UK, and we are in EMF mode. It's supposed to be S9, so it's a little short of that. And to achieve S9, we need to put in 260 microvolts. So that's what's known as a lazy meter in transmit. 
Bearing in mind the radio is doing 3.1 watts. Let's see what the meter says. We're in low power. It says about 3.8. Meter lamp works. Switches, not that one. Potentiometers and LPA. Testing one, two. Absolutely fine. Right, so get it opened up and we'll do the VCO and that's probably my 15 minutes up. This wasn't planned today, this was planned for Sunday. With it not turning up, I tried to do my accounts for the month. On the other hand, this is going back to the customer tomorrow on our road trip to Lowestoft. So it needs to be done. sure that's dressed properly no sharp bits and channel 40 on the radio to that earth strap sometimes that's not fitted so we'll clip it to a coil. Sometimes we even fit the missing strap. 4.25 on receive. See what it is on transmit. Oh dear, that's not good. 2.6. So well, that's not this one's neither here nor there. Let's get back to that meter. Wrong way. I'll certainly do me. Now it might have a vector transmit. Two point four, it hasn't, so we'll adjust that for four as well. Trimmer capacitor is nice and smooth. Sometimes a jerky and it's time to put a new one in. Right, so let's fix that. Check it on channel 1. And that's within the range. That's within the range. Good. If you don't do that, you end up with channels dropping out at one end or the other, not in the middle. Let's we'll see if we can get transmit started. So, I'm on the 3 watt scale, it needs to go to the other scale because it's already doing more power at 3.1 than the 3 watt scale. So it's the centre of the re centre of the peak. Especially if we get to that. That's fine. These so far have been spot on.
We've deliberately set low. Um, the supplying dealer supposed to do this, but they don't. Apart from a few, like nights. So it's maximum on the yellow one. It's maximum on the centre one. And it's maximum on the green one. And hopefully by that point you've got more than 4.4 watts. I'm going to go through them again. don't want to key up for long because it can't support this power it's doing 4.9 watts so I've said many times before there's some daft people leave these in this position on full whack it, it's not necessarily um, doing all this on 27 megs although this test set's only measuring what uh, between 24 and 33 megs um, it's not going to it, it's not supposed to be doing more than the 4 watts um, and it's, what happens is it melts the th one, two, three coils and some chokes. So if you get a set that's been tweaked up beyond the four watts, and not not many, not all of them will even go above four watts, but they're supposed to in this position. They're supposed to do four point four watts to make these adjustments balance. Um, but not all sets do. The manufacturer says the radio does three point eight watts, so that we, we try and get four because that's the legal limit so now we're going to turn the yellow one clockwise to 4.4 and the green one anti-clockwise service panel says to 3.8 but it's four because that's the legal limit we want everything we're entitled to and when I come back we'll check the balance Right, so I'm back, it's 4 watts on channel 20, it's 4 watts on channel 1, it's 4 watts on channel 40. Current constant is now 1.105. And let's put some switch cleaner on that preset, which is low power, and that can be soaking in. And if we find which switch high low power is, let's switch the radio off. It's the second one in. Now while we uh, are thinking about it, this business about power drop. So this radio, whatever the power drop is on this cable, is doing 4 watts into the test set. So let's measure what the voltage is at the radio. So when I key up, 13.73 and that drops to 13.2 if we look at the back of the radio it says 13.2 and I'll just turn the volume up so there you go so if we apply 13.8 volts to the power connector and tune the radio at 13.8 volts, it will do more power. And then when the customers get it back, it will be illegally so. Interesting little test. Right, um, let's go down to low power.
see whether we've got that soaked in. 4 watts, the 0.4 is what we're looking for. There we are, 0 0.4, no problem. It's nice and smooth, so cleaning the preset is fine, and cleaning the switch too. So we'll set the transmit power meter to 4 watts. It's now banging across. So that's now 400 milliwatts. Um, low power preset clean. So we've done those two things. Let's do the frequency and then we'll do deviation. So over to the frequency counter on the inset picture. 27.79108. Six toggling seven. Always leave them very, very slightly high because they drop with age. Right, so I'll disconnect from this test set and I'll plug into the one on the bench behind, which is the quartz lock 282A. We'll use the deviation meter on there. So I want the AGC feedy backy one to centre position. That centre position, if I can get the tool back out. Let's have a little look. One, it's 1.8. Pop that up a fraction. Look, that's giving us a peak at 2.5 now. Right, we'll plug it back into the Marconi test set and we'll see whether the Marconi test set is lying today or whether it agrees. Wow, it's spot on today. Saying 2.4 peak on that one. So it was 1.8, and it's now 2.2, 2.5 kilohertz. We set that, didn't we? We did. Right, let's do the receiver. So it was already pretty splendid, but we've seen better. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong because it already exceeds the manufacturer's specification. So, first thing we're going to do, we'll go over to the oscilloscope. I've got 100 microvolts on the signal generator. And we'll just turn enough volume for a decent trace on the oscilloscope. It's probably a bit too much. That oscilloscope is just connected across the speaker and one kilohertz tone, 100 microvolts. Let's see whether we've got peak or not. Hmm, hard to tell. So if it's not peak one way, it'll be quiet, and if it's not peak the other way, it's garbled. Right, so that's that done over to the cyanide meter just move the camera back a bit so what I now need to do is adjust the signal on the signal generator so about five four or five dBs showing on that meter and the plan is to move the needles to the right 
as the signal gets stronger and more away from the noise. And then we reduce the attenuator. So I've said before on the Simon at 134 chassis, I'll just turn down the volume a moment while I tell you this. I've said before on this chassis, when it's a base station version, you get an extra coil there. So your Midland 76900 like we have here, the Harrier CBX like we have here, and the Midland, no, the York JCB869 base station, which we also have here, um, there's an extra coil there. Now if you're using a Savinet 134 set from the lower end, the more the entry models like the York 861, the Rotel RVC220, and the Binotone Speedway, for example, you end up with this coil not being fitted. And these extras ones are to do with selectivity, in other words, bleed over. Um, when you get to the Rotel 230, it's 50-50 as to whether you have that fitted or not. But sets like the Harvard 420M do have that fitted. So th th that's the only difference in the top and bottom range of the Subnet 134. So if you consider you can have a Harrier CB, uh, which comes into the lower range for, what were they, £69? Or you can pay uh, £379 for the Midland 76900 base station. The same minutes. Right, uh, back to what we were supposed to be doing, which is making sure we've got absolute optimum receive. So we're going to start off with the front end. Oh, look. It's so much improved. I'm going to have to adjust the attenuator. That was good. Next. That was spot on. That was spot on too. Now we increase the signal a bit to do the intermediate frequencies. That's okay. Oh, tiny touch there. That's okay. So it's just that one, really. Okay, let's get some new readings. So for 12 dB, put another set doing two. For 10 dB, again I'm between scales, so don't think we can read it on the other scale accurately. Yeah, it says 0.2 on the other scale. And that's what we'll put down. It's just slightly less, probably 0.19 uh, or something like that. And then what we got for 20? 0.45 there you go okay so now we want to do the S meter so once again we'll put 100 microvolts and I'm using the EMF scale which is harder to achieve than PD EMF being electromotive force and PD being potential difference we need to make sure that's exactly 9, it isn't at the moment, it was a bit lazy wasn't it? And there we have it, that leaves us with squelch. So drop the signal generator's attenuator a little bit, turn the squelch to full, and once again I want that to open when the squelch control uh, with the squelch control at full I want it to open when I hit 100 microvolts that's 3 microvolts, 10, 30, 100 it's perfect so the squelch presets there, I didn't need to touch it it was once the receiver was actually retuned that's come right that's why I do these in the sequence I do them 
Oh, minimum. We haven't done minimum. So, attenuator on the signal generator. I'm parking it at point 0.3 of a microvolt. Set the squelch on the radio. Signal generator back on. Not point seven eight. Excellent. So that's been done. So that's another really good set. And then you know what? I'll come up to one of these and it'll be point seven of a micro. It won't be point two. They're not all the best of the best. So another splendid set. Unplug the speaker, testing that the built-in speaker is right. We'll test it with his mic on the on-the-air test. Slacking off this case side. Not sure why that's not wanting to go together. There we go, that all matches up now. Right, well, I'm going to unplug from the test equipment, uh, switch off the test gear, and plug in the roof aerial, which is the Antron 99, or is it a Solarcon 99? Just mounted above gut level of a single story building. Not in a Roger. Hmm. Not here in the Nottingham Burning Brigade. Have they all had their radios confiscated by the authorities? There we have it. A really splendid York JCB863 using the Cybernet 134 chassis from 1981. Thank you for watching.